Hi, and welcome to Tech Talks with T Tech Digital, your go to place for the latest in customer experience technology. I'm your host, Dan Sanders, coming to you from the intersection of innovation and practicality in the digital world. So, without any further waiting, let's explore the digital solutions shaping our world and transforming customer experiences. Today, I'm joined by Jeffrey. Ben and Robert, some of my T-Tech colleagues from around the globe, and we're going to be discussing knowledge bases. So, the first one, as we are talking Genesis Cloud CX, is Robert, what is Genesis Knowledge, and why is it important, and what key benefits to the customers and clients that we have can this bring in? Yeah, so knowledge has been an evolutionary product within Genesis. They originally, you know, had canned responses were, you know, static uh, information that you could bring into chats, you could bring into messaging, you could bring into emails and whatnot. Uh, with the acquisition of Bolt 360 several years back, they had a robust knowledge base. And so now that has been brought into Genesis Cloud as our Knowledge Workbench 2.0. It gives you a centralized location to keep articles of information to be used within bots, to be used in um, uh, customer portals on the website, to be used with agent assist. It can also be used as your canned responses now in a very quick and easy way to access both those and the knowledge. It is pretty much designed to be in uh, Genesis Cloud, but the nice thing is you don't have to pay for it. It's just there and uh, you can utilize it in any fashion you want. That's brilliant, Robert. Thank you. So we talk about um, it's, it's a built-in, it's part of the package, the knowledge base that's there. For customers who already have a knowledge base, or as you mentioned, Bold360, and there's a deprecation on Bold360, I believe it goes end of life um, this year. What would you recommend a customer does? Do they is what's best practice for them um, when they want to take the information that's in their current knowledge base and move it to either the Genesis Cloud knowledge base or another knowledge base? Are there best practices in this? And I'll throw that out to the wider audience. I mean, there are various different ways that you can import information in. Um, as Robert suggested there previously, you can import from URLs. You can uh, use CSV files. I think Jeffrey mentioned that in our earlier talk. And um, you can use JSON files. Just You can just pull those into your knowledge base. Um, use use everything that you've already existing don't don't reinvent the wheel with your knowledge. You know, just bring it. Just bring the articles that you have and, and pull them into this system. The other thing that we need to look at is the possibility of syncing data. You know, that uh, there is ways through the APIs uh, to actually sync data. So if you did have something in another resource we could take that data and actually sync it in. So you either you know utilize the knowledge within Genesis or maybe use an outside system like Shelf within Genesis. Um, but even if you did have an external database, say in Salesforce, uh, you know, using their knowledge or Kendra in AWS, to be able to take that data and sync it in regularly to Genesis so you don't have to maintain it in two places. How does a client ensure that uh, their content organization and the, the quality of their content um, from their old knowledge base into the new one, whether that be something like Shelf or the Genesis knowledge base, how do, we, how do they create that efficiency? I would say it depends on how did you initially put in the knowledge inside Genesis Cloud. I mean, if you're using URL, then most likely you can you know, update it in, in one single place, where which is your URLs, or um, the it will be more of a manual thing if you import it via a CSV file or XLS, because um, it will now be inside Genesis Cloud, and that's where you're going to, to update all of your knowledge base. Um, but as what Robert says, if you're going to be utilizing the API, synchronization is much more, way better, right? Because you can just do the same thing that you're doing when updating your old knowledge base, um, either it's coming from Salesforce or not. Um, and the one inside Genesis will aut aut automatically be updated as well. Knowledge base is now at the heart of the CX solution. It almost becomes a foundation for you to go on and use things like agent assist. And obviously, uh, as technology increases, people are wanting to use AI and they're wanting to use bots. So instead of just a straightforward Q&A that you see on 
um, websites from a few years ago. Now we're trying to get a lot more self-service. We're trying to get the bots to do all the answering uh, for those customers and everything. When we start talking about the best approach to create a web messaging bot that utilizes the knowledge base, what do we believe are the key factors in a client achieving this? Well, I could say curation of knowledge is something that most companies don't have in place. They have people just placing files in a SharePoint, or they might have a wiki that they update, or they might have this one note. It's all over the place. It's really, you know, let's consolidate, let's, you know, centralize, and let's curate all of that knowledge into a single location. Now, one of the the key features of the Genesis knowledge is that we can have what's called knowledge variations. So I could have a very rich knowledge article with pictures and videos and links like that, maybe you know 12 pages long, but being able to highlight just an answer of that for a voice conversation. So you might just read a sentence or two out of this article for voice, or maybe for a web messaging session, you give a, a smaller formatted version of it. So having variations based on how it's used is very beneficial within the Genesis because of the omni-channel approach. We're not just, hey, here's a document. It is, okay, well, here's an article that can be used in different parts of the system through different content variations. That's really insightful. So what we're saying is there's no need to duplicate multiple um, different articles, whether they be wiki or whatever, depending on the interaction you're using. So a voice interaction can use the same article as a digital interaction. And I suppose that's the same for an agent facing article when the agent's talking to a customer facing article as well. Is that right? Again, it will depend on the configuration that you created. Um, if you're utilizing Agent Assist, um, once you create an assistant, do you want the knowledge base to be available both in um, uh, in the digital world or only for uh, for both digital and voice? Um, so there. Um, and yes, um, again, the the recommendation of an AI will be chop down or get from the articles that you created. It will not show you the entire 12 pages of article, just the specific ones that you need. Brilliant. And what what are we seeing from our clients at the moment when it comes to knowledge base? I know from my own personal experience over here in uh, EMEA, we are seeing that shift from the standalone knowledge base now is either to the Genesis Cloud knowledge base or to a uh, an enterprise knowledge base, and we've mentioned it a few times, Shelf. Are you seeing the same uh, around the world? Because I know, obviously, we're a global company, so and we're all in different parts of the globe, so to get your experiences would be really good. I think it really depends on the maturity of the, the knowledge. Um, if, if we come greenfield into most companies, we will see five or 10 different locations that they have knowledge. Uh, it could have been in Zendesk, it could have been in Salesforce, it could have been just files on a folder, not even SharePoint, just a share. I uh, went to one customer who had all their knowledge in Outlook. It's like, really? And I said, well, we can search easily in that. <laughs> I said, okay. And so they were just creating emails and pumping them into Outlook and having folders that people would go through. It's like, okay, um, that's different. But, you know, it is very different depending on the maturity of the company and their knowledge. Um, you know, for the most part worldwide, we do see the big companies like SharePoint, um, SharePoint, of course, you know, where they store the, their PDFs and their Excel and Word. And then um, we have a lot of people using Zendesk knowledge as well. And um, quite a few Bold 360s, surprisingly, they had a good base of customers who really liked the way the knowledge worked in Bold. And so it was also a very popular piece. It's good to hear that it's not just me who comes across customers using different things for knowledge bases. Um, I met with a client the other day who used a OneNote for example, um, everyone can change it. It's brilliant, it, it works. Um, so that's great. Okay, so I suppose the next question uh, for the team is, we've got a lot of clients, a lot of clients will be watching this, potential clients and everything, and will be wondering how we'll get started. When they come to approaching knowledge for such, what is the one thing they should think about more? For me, it's 
the quality of content and what content is required. Are there any other big sort of um, ticket items that people should be aware of? So yeah, I would just basically make sure that your knowledge is up to date and accurate and making sure that those articles where you do have um, particular products or services that are, are consistently changing, make sure that the knowledge keeps up with the change to that product uh, so that you're not offering stale information to your agents to then offer on to your customers. Making sure that um, things are up to date would be, would be a really good um, position to be in there. And that wraps up another episode of Tech Talks with T-Tech Digital. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the cutting edge of customer experience technology. A special thanks to our guests, Robert, Jeffrey and Ben, for sharing their expertise and insights today. If you have any questions about today's topic or anything related to customer experience, we're here to help. Don't hesitate to reach out.